Welcome back to our ultrasound case of the month series. Feel free to comment below and I'll attempt to address any questions or concerns. The case starts with a 35-year-old male presented by a medic after falling from a roof. It was estimated he was 8 feet in the air when he fell, landing on his right side. There was no reported loss of consciousness and medic reported he was complaining of pain in the right abdomen upon their arrival. The initial vitals were reassuring, yet examination was difficult since he was given ketamine en route, which resulted in the patient being slightly dissociated. On examination, there was not evidence of external trauma, and he appeared to display right-sided abdominal tenderness to palpation. The utilization of ultrasound should be of no surprise for this case series. However, you could easily scrutinize why ultrasound was utilized since the patient was hemodynamically stable, and classically, a fast examination is employed in those trauma patients with hypotension in order to help decide upon further resuscitative steps with the potential for expediting operative interventions. With this stated, I will on occasion fast patients who not meet our institutional trauma team activation. If I am concerned about the clinical picture and evidence of free fluid would expedite management and trauma team involvement. However, I need to stress that a fast examination without free fluid does not sufficiently rule out injury and should not be used in isolation. It is only one component of evaluating the patient in front of you where multiple pieces of data must be analyzed and interpreted. Here is the first image obtained by the team managing the patient. As you have hopefully determined, this is a view of the right upper quadrant, sometimes referred to as Morrison's pouch. To help with anatomy identification, the diaphragm is the bright echogenic structure on the left-hand side of the screen. The gallbladder can be seen in certain views as well. The kidney is highlighted in yellow. I intentionally left the frame rate as it was captured since this is more common for real-world interpretation of ultrasound images. Based upon this view, the team felt no free fluid was identified in the right upper quadrant. Given the patient's right-sided pain, the treatment team farther focused on the liver to examine this area for possible pathology. While there does not appear to be evidence of free fluid, the mixed echogenic appearance of liver was noted to be abnormal, especially for a patient without known liver disease. The left upper quadrant was the next area to be scanned. In this view, the kidney with its hypoechoic cortex and hyperechoic renal pelvis can be seen. While a good view of the kidney is displayed, the spleen is not clearly visualized. The pelvis was subsequently viewed in a transverse appearance. The bladder is clearly visible as a large black hypochoic structure. No free fluid outside the bladder was identified by the treatment team. I personally arrived at bedside as the fast examination was being completed. I reviewed the video clips and agreed with the interpretation that no free fluid was identified. However, I thought the echogenicity of the liver parenchyma was abnormal and I did not feel the left upper quadrant view was sufficient for adequate interpretation. I find that novice sonographers extrapolate experience from the right upper quadrant to the left and focus too much upon the splenorenal recess rather than the higher yield subdiaphragmatic area or pericolic gutter. Since I reviewed the initial imaging at bedside, we easily went back to the left upper quadrant and obtained an adequate view to be able to confidently state that the fast was either negative or positive. When an adequate view of the subdiaphragmatic area was visualized, fluid was clearly visible. Of note, we can better see the splenolina recess, and this appears to be negative for the presence of free fluid. Here, the fluid in the subdiaphragmatic area is highlighted in red, with the kidney highlighted in yellow, showing a clear example of the importance of fully analyzing the left upper quadrant. With this information, we moved the patient to a monitor bed, activated the trauma team, and personally expedited the CT scan. A representative scroll through the CT scan is displayed here. I won't discuss CT interpretation at length, yet most of you will be able to visualize the presence of free fluid in both the right and left upper quadrants. Additionally, a grade 5 liver laceration is identified, which likely explains the abnormal liver echogenicity noted on the FAST. Given the grade 5 liver laceration, the appearance of active extravasation, the interventional radiology team was consulted, resulting in an IR embolization of the bleeding vessel. The patient's initial labs displayed a hemoglobin of 14, which dropped to a low of 10 later that day. He was subsequently managed with an uneventful hospitalization on his post-hospitalization follow-up was doing well without complication. Even with my ultrasound focus, I am someone who feels that we overutilize the FAST examination, especially given its classic indication for hypotensive patients. However, I understand the importance of physicians gaining familiarity with the scan and being able to interpret a normal study. Since we often go through the paces on less sick patients, I commonly see a lack of detail and an underappreciation of the locations for each FAST location that are highest yield. This case highlights that fact and our need to make sure we obtain adequate imaging of each quadrant, especially the left upper quadrant, where just visualizing the splenorenal recess is not enough. Identification of free flow in this case expedited the workup and subsequent interventions before the patient could potentially hemodynamically decompensate. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this provides another example why ultrasound can help take better care of your patients. Feel free to comment below.